Alright, so I'm doing my topic on overfishing and basically just over harvesting fish in general. So with three-fourths of the planet covered in water, you'd expect that the ocean has a limitless amount of food available for us. But the limit does exist. <laughs> the, there is actually over harvesting in the last 50 years has devastated up to 85% of the fish stocks and 85% of the fish stocks have actually reached a biological limit or have passed it and they're actually, what that means is that the fish can't reproduce fast enough then they're being captured. There's a 2006 study that actually said that by 2048 all the fish stocks that we're currently uh, fishing will collapse by that time and even though there are regulations that have been put in it's still not changing as much significantly to push back that date far enough or even like stop the collapse of fish stocks. And so what we're going to look at is the fishing industry as a whole and the aquarium trade industry and how harvesting the fish from the reefs actually affects it also. So before the 1900s, fishing was sustainable because it was fishing for the fishermen, for the family, and they were also just fishing, giving, selling the small surplus that they had and the commercial fishing was just a couple hundred fish a year and it wasn't anything to damage the population. But after the 1950s, governments actually wanted to push and develop more technologies to increase fishing, to increase the availability and affordability of a new protein-rich food source. And so with that, the new technologies actually exponentially grew and to the point where now there's 2.5 more fleets than the ocean can actually handle. It can't support that many boats and that much fishing. And so these are all the different types of technologies they've actually caused. And the types of fishing methods also have a strain on the environment. These are uh, trawls. And what trawling is, is basically dragging a net behind your boat and just catching anything that's behind it. One of the most devastating ones to the environment is benthic trawling where the net itself is actually weighed down and it's just dragged across the sea bottom and just destroys everything in its path and captures anything that goes in it. So here you have like the coral reef before and then after trawling it just paves it over completely. And coral reefs actually make up one tenth of one percent of the ocean but they actually account for 25 percent of the fish species that we actually know in the ocean. And so they're a critical environment for these animals. They just uh, go like mauling them over completely is just destroying the, the oceans. And then when you go to fishing in large nets, that just captures anything in its way, you get to bycatch. With bycatch, you just catch random fish that aren't your target species, and just when they pull them overboard, and they see how the, they see that they didn't get the fish they wanted, they see a dead shark, dead whale, dolphin, manta ray, they just throw them back over, dead or alive, and it's just slaughtering an animal for no reason just because they just use an unpractical way of fishing. Another way of, uh, technique of fishing is long lining, where they just have a long strip of line floating out in buoys, and it's just miles and miles of fishing line with hooks and lines every so often. And you just see every couple of days, they just come back, see what they got, and it's just tons of different little fish or sharks or whales that just come up and get the free food, and they can just die on the line. And so with that, you see all the negatives and they're just catching fish that doesn't need to be caught and killed. About 17% of fish caught are actually by catch. And so with such large nets that you're just catching a bunch of random stuff, you're actually catching a lot more fish than you can actually handle. So now the bluefin tuna is one great example of this since it was actually greatly abundant before. It's a huge, huge tuna and it's really popular in Japan. And now they're actually about 2.7% of the population that there was before the uh, Industrial Revolution. And so, with 97% of its stock destroyed, the, the price of it has been going up so much that they, there's so much more demand for it. This one bluefin tuna in Japan actually just sold for $1.7 million for just that one fish. And the whole problem with it is that they're, cat they're fishing the fish so fast that they don't even get a chance to actually breed. 90% of the fish being harvested isn't even, uh, didn't even get a chance to reproduce, and they don't even get a chance to uh, replenish their numbers. And you all know Mitsubishi, right? The one car company and all the technologies. They actually have 40% of 
uh, market stock of the fish and what they're doing is that they're importing all the fish from the Mediterranean Sea into uh, Tokyo and some of it is going into the fish markets but a lot of it is actually going to jar giant warehouse uh, freezers and freezing the fish until the population of bluefin tuna drops or just goes completely extinct and they just upsell all the frozen fish which is actually absolutely terrible and so what, what's being done about it? In 2012, the U.S. was the first country to actually put regulations on all of the fish it's being managed, but it isn't enough. One of the biggest problems with regulating uh, the fishing industry is that there isn't enough support and they're not actually enforcing it as well as it should be. There are actually a lot of cases of uh, officers that regulate the fishing industry being harassed and attacked by a lot of fishermen because to them, it's not just you're limiting the fish. It, to them, it's you can't fish more than this amount, you don't get this much more money, your family doesn't get this much more pay, and to them they just see the negatives of it. And so what this leads to is that we're seeing about 11 to 27 million tons of fish being illegally or unregulatedly caught and a year. And so basically that means the regulations aren't really working well. They need to increase the amount of enforcement they have and push this like important thing before we lose our fish stocks. So the aquarium trade is another uh, another negative that we're losing a lot of fish through. It's not just like overfishing, where overfishing is just getting as many fish as possible, but they're actually losing the biodiversity and the one of the main habitats for a lot of fish in the ocean. So over harvesting, you all know the movie Nemo. When Nemo actually came out, overnight. 30 to 40 percent, there was a 30 to 40 percent surge in the amount of sales of clownfish. Clownfish are actually captive bred so they can maintain those numbers and they were able to keep up with the demand. But when Finding Dory came out, the Regal Blue Tang wasn't as lucky. They actually aren't captive bred and it's actually pretty hard to take care of them since they grow up to a feet long and they're actually pretty hard to take care of. So the numbers in Indonesia and the Philippines have actually been dropping dramatically. And one of the things over harvesting these fish that have, uh, has an effect on the environment is you don't see the stability of the whole food chain. These guys actually are algae eaters and they pick off the algae from the corals. So when you uh, drop their numbers, that means that there's less algae being picked off of the corals, allowing for the algae to actually grow over the corals, blocking off the light, allowing the zooxanthella to, kill, to be killed off, bleaching or just killing off the coral in general. And again, that's just a super critical environment for these fish. And so you think, why don't we just sell only uh, captive bred fish? Well, the 1,800 fish that are actually sold in the aquarium trade, only a handful are actually captive bred. Clownfish are one of them, and some gobies and a couple of other fish. But the thing is, the difference is actually significant. Even though there's a bunch of different qualities of clownfish, you can see the difference between a captive bred and a wild caught. There's just better color, they're bulkier, and more hardy fish. I work at a fish store, and whenever we get fish in that are wild caught from customers that just return a fish, uh, we actually need to know that because we actually upsell the price a lot more, since it's more in demand. And one of the biggest issues with the aquarium fish trade is that uh, the way they collect them. So sodium cyanide is illegal in all countries to use to collect fish but it's still practiced so much, especially in the in southeastern countries in Asia. So what it is, it's just uh, they get the sodium cyanide, crush it up, mix it with water and put it in these bottles. And then the divers go down, see the fish, and just spray it around them. And what it does is it lowers the respiration of the fish and knocks them unconscious, easy to catch. But a lot of the times the fish either dies on the spot or in transit, and if not, they just die in some random aquarium keeper's tank. Because the cyanide, depending on the amount of exposure, it will kill off the fish later on, most of the time. And one of the things you don't look at is who it's also harming. The thing is, the cyanide, since it kills off the fish, even when they get the fish, the keep fish keepers, they go back, buy more fish, and then it's just a vicious cycle. They're just making the demand for these fish go on and on. And when you use sodium cyanide, for every fish you kill, you actually kill off about a square foot of coral. It'll bleach it or it'll just kill it off again, depending on the amount of exposure of sodium cyanide. 
And so again, what can be done about both the fishing industry and the aquarium fish trade industry? Well, one of the things you can do is increase, again, the amount of government regulation and the amount of enforcement that goes into it. There are already regulations and quotas on the fishing industry, but we need to actually start working on enforcing them and putting more support on the people that actually regulate it because they're not getting enough power to make the regulations. And on the aquarium fish industry, because the fish come from all around the world and they cross so many borders, people don't really back check to where they come from, how they're caught. I think that's something that many countries need to start being aware of because it's not just killing off some random fish that's going to be in a guy's tank. It's going to be killing off a bunch of corals and killing habitats and it's going to be messing up the whole ecosystem if you're just over harvesting these fish. So one of the things that, the biggest thing that uh, people can do is consumer awareness for both industries. So for the aquarium trade industry, when you're buying a fish, you can look at buying captive bred fish or buy from uh, a place you know is sustainably caught. Like Hawaii has some of the best regulations on catching their fish and they know how much is sustainable to be harvested. And then there's also a lot of uh, food marketplaces that have certified sustainably caught fish labels. And it's a really important thing because it actually makes sure that what you're buying is sustainably caught and makes sure protects the fish itself. So I think this is something that we should really start implementing in a lot more of the stores nationwide to endorse all the sustainably caught fish because they're not as much there's not as much support for sustainably caught fish. Yeah.